This is the Pearson Edexcel IL from uh, the paper to uh, Pure Math 2, excuse me, from January 2023. And this video deals with question five, which has calculus in it, a little bit of the factor theorem and some functions. Right. Question five gives you this function with P's and Q's in it. And uh, P's and Q's are constants and P has to be larger than zero. It gives you the first factor. It gives you that X minus three is a factor of your function. And then it wants to you to show this. If, that, if, if X minus three is a factor, then show this. Okay. So let's take a look. Question 5a. Well, anytime I see x minus 3 is a factor, uh, well, then I know because if x minus 3 is a factor, then x minus 3 uh, must be equal to 0, and x must be equal to 3. If it's a factor, that means that it's the y is 0. OK, so we are essentially looking for f of 3, saying, well, where? is where the x is 3. f of 3, if we're using our f of x formula, so it'd be 3 is power of 3 plus p plus 3 um, times by 3 squared minus 3 and plus q. Simplify. Uh, this, of course, uh, f of 3 also equals to 0 because it's a factor. We know this. So if we simplify all this information, 3 to the power of 3 is 27. p plus 3 times 3 to squared is 9. So we have 9 times p is 9p. Then we have 9 times 3, which is uh, another 27. Okay. Uh, minus 3 plus q. And this is all equal to 0 because f of 3 was a factor. Simplify this. 27 plus 27 gives us 51. Plus 9p uh, plus q is all equal to 0. And uh, we want it to look like this. So let's just take 51 to the other side by minusing 51 on both sides. So 9p plus q equals negative 51. That's the answer to A. 5B. 5B um, is also given, it's further given, that when f of x is divided by x plus p, the remainder is 9. OK, so the same logic as before with the factor. But we can say that when f of x is divided by x plus p, then we're going to be left over with 9. So same logic as before. That means when um, x is equal to negative p, take it over the equal sign, then uh, y is equal to 9. So let's put all that information in. This would look sort of like f of minus p must be equal to 9. So f of minus p. Let's sub that into our formula. Minus p cubed plus p plus 3 plus minus p squared minus minus p plus um, q. Minus p, that was here, q, yes, is equal to 9. OK. So simplify this a bit, mm, minus p cubed, nothing, it can just leave that like that. Okay, taking minus p squared is just going to be p squared, minus p times minus p is just p. So p squared times p is p to the power of 3. p squared, this is 
equals to p squared. p squared times three is three p squared. Minus minus p is plus p plus q, uh, all equal to nine. Okay. Negative p to the power of three is negative p to the power of three, because it's a negative it, it, minus p times minus p times minus p makes minus p. So these two cancel out, negative p to the power of three plus p to the power of three. Then we're left with three p squared plus p plus q. And let's bring the, the, the nine to the left because that's how it is in the answer, in the required answer. Minusing nine on both sides. Uh, there we are. Okay, 5c. Um, now it wants p and q, there's two unknowns. And so you need two equations in order to work it out. And we have two equations. We have this one we can call number one and this one uh, number two. So this question follows on on itself. So what? Uh, th there's two ways to do simultaneous equations. Um, I'm going to do a little rearranging of equation number one. Uh, that's, so I'm going to change equation number one. I'm going to minus 9p on both sides. So I get q equals to negative 51 minus 9p. And this just makes it easier that I can sub q, I can sub the q value into the other equation. So let's rename that my equation one. Okay. So we subbing equation one into equation two. So every time I see a q, I write what q is in equation one. So three p squared plus p plus, there's a q, so it's minus 51 minus nine p um, minus nine equals to zero. Okay, simplify this with so three p squared plus p minus 51 minus 51, minus 9p, negative times the positive is still negative, minus 9. Let's look at any like terms. So we have a p squared term, no like terms. We've got a p and 9p, and then we've got our constants. Okay, so we end up with 3p squared. Uh, 1p minus 9p is minus 8p. And... Uh, 51, negative 51 minus another nine is minus 60, equal to zero. Uh, I see this and straight away want to go to my quadratic formula. So quadratic formula is um, x is equal to negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a where uh, if we're in standard form, a is the coefficient of the p squared term, b is the coefficient of the p, and c is the constant. Okay, so we know that p is equal to negative our b, which is negative eight, plus or minus the square root of negative eight squared minus four, three, negative 60, and all of this, is divided by two times our a value, which is three. When you put this in the calculator, you have two separate equations. So p is equal to uh, negative b plus so on, or negative b minus so on. Okay. So when I, I put this in my calculator, I quickly just do that. And I get, uh, P is equal to six uh, is one of them. Uh, okay. P is equal to negative 10 over three. Well, let's just quickly uh, check our requirements to see if that's, uh, we had a requirement that P needs to be uh, positive, larger than zero. So this one's invalid. This one's invalid. So p equals six is the only 
valid answer. Great. 5c. Now, oh, we're not complete. We still need to find q. Well, the last step, if we have that p is equal to 6, is we can sub uh, the value of p equal to 6 into one of our equations. And I see that probably it's easy to sub it into equation 1. So therefore, substitute uh, p equals to 6 into equation number 1. Therefore, our q will equal negative 51 minus 9 times 6. Let me just recheck that at the top here. 9p. Yeah, yes. 9 times 6, negative 51. Okay. I'll just put that in my calculator. I get 105. Um, negative 105 is my q. That's the only q value. That was number C. Okay, number D. Hence, find a quadratic expression G of X such that F of X is equal to minus 3 of G of X. Okay, well, let's see what we have here. So we know... This is number 5D. We know that f of x is, um, we have p and q now. So f of x is equal to x cubed plus uh, p is 6. So 6 plus 3 is 9. 9x nine squared and minus x. And our q value is minus 105. So we know that that's what f of x is now, it's following up on from question C. Um, then with the information they've given us here, we can say, well, if f of x is equal to x minus 3 times by g of x, then um, our g of x, if we divide both sides by x minus, uh, x minus 3, divide both sides by x minus 3, then our g of x is equal to our f of x over x minus 3, or divided by x minus 3, if you want to rather say it that way. Um, because uh, the reason to say it that way is that if x minus 3 is a factor. x minus 3 was given as a, as a factor, which means it divides cleanly. This was given in... Um, uh, the beginning information. So that means it'll divide cleanly if we factorize our f of x. So let's start there. We're going to factorize f of x. f of x, we're going to factorize it. So we know that x minus 3 is a factor. It's been given. And what this will give us, we had a cubic graph. Um, we had a cubic function. Let me just grab that down. This time I'm going to copy paste it, see what we can do. This is my function. Okay, copy, paste, fantastic. So this is my function f of x that we trying to factor. Okay, that uh, didn't work quite as cleanly as what I had hoped. Let's make that look a little bit. So we know that x minus 3 is a factor. Right. So when you factorize a cubic function, then you get a some sort of factor here, which we had x minus 3, and then we're going to have an, some sort of x squared term. Then we're going to have some sort of x term, which is plus or minus, and then plus or minus some sort of constant term. Okay. So that's what we're going to get left over. And I'll teach you my method to find the to find those three unknowns. So first, I still see if I can give this a go. 
Ah, much better. Okay. Um, right. So first we want to we ask ourselves, what times x will make x cubed? What times x will make x cubed? Well, x squared. x squared times x will make x cubed. So let's actually use the highlight tool there. And so that's an easy term. And then we ask ourselves, what times negative 3 will make 105, the constant term in the cubic graph? Well, um, uh, 35. Uh, is it, it's positive, positive 35, because positive times a negative, we need it. So 35 will make the constant term. And then in order to get this middle term, we just a couple more steps. So we use, we're aiming for this, oopsie. We're aiming for the nine X squared term, but this method uses a kind of a quick trick. So we do minus three times X, we times these two together. We get minus three X squared and we ask ourselves what, plusing or minusing will equal the nine X squared term. So what do we need to add or subtract from negative three X squared in order to get positive nine X squared? Okay, so we have to add 12 X squared, but when we put it back in here, it's in the position of the X term. So it's just gonna be 12 X. That's how we factor our cubic uh, functions. So we've, we've got our factors here and see where we were going with that. So we were going with that, but we had that, oh, we, we were asked, what is g of x? Okay, so g of x is equal to our f of x, which is now factored into this thing. Um, over x minus three, so we rearranged it a little bit. Let's get that nice straight line there, nice. And fantastic, those cancel out, nice and neat. So g of x is simply equal to x squared plus 12x plus 35. Okay, that is question 5D concludes question five.